Goose High School Super 7 ceremony has been hosted by many different organizations, and each ceremony has been unique. However, I guarantee everyone in attendance this evening, this event will be one of a kind. Although the school year has presented unprecedented challenges for the outstanding students that will be honored tonight, I request everyone to forget the circumstances that currently affect us today and enjoy your evening as we celebrate these outstanding Goose High School students. I'd like to thank Mrs. Thurman Lee Schumacher and the members of the Bay of Sigma Phi organization for playing this event. They have hosted this ceremony since 1998. And all that can be in attendance tonight, I'd like to personally say thank you for everything that you do for our students. I'll begin this evening ceremony by reading a statement from Mrs. Schumacher detailing the history of the Super 7 event. The Super 7 award dinner originated in 1975 based on a proposal from Warren Stevens, president of the Toulouse Women's Club. The purpose was to encourage academic scholarship on the young people of Toulouse. This idea took off and the Women's Club continued this tradition for 22 years until their club was banned. In 1998, the members of the Bay of Sigma Phi came forward to continue this tradition of honoring the top academic, academic students of Blues High School. From 1999 until 2015, which brought from this international Blues County, co sponsored the Super 7 dinner. Eventually, in 2016, Blues Lions Club joined forces with Bay of Sigma Phi to give credit to the students for their academic excellence. The Super 7 event has been in time to recognize the top scholars of the junior senior classes. The students, parents, members of the administrative staff, the school board, and the county superintendent are also on hand to show their support for these students. In 2001, the Super 7 seniors were given the opportunity to name one of the teachers who has been the most influential in their educational career. Each Super 7 student will receive a certificate of excellence, and the seniors will also receive a check of $150 this evening to help with college expenses. The members of Bay State Profile would like to give a special thanks to the following individuals, businesses, and organizations for their donations and support of the Super 7 event. Clouse County Office of Education, Clouse Lions Club, Clouse Rotary, Clouse Sun Herald, Davies Oil Company, Merchant Bank of Commerce, Stoddard Law Firm, Williams Pioneer Review, and Elizabeth and Charles Jerkson. Let's give a round of applause to all these organizations for supporting this event tonight. <laughs> and now we'll read a statement from the members of Beta Sigma Phi to honor our Super 7 students. The members of Beta Sigma Phi want to congratulate each Super 7 student for your accomplishments. You have devoted such much time and effort to earn your place as a Super 7. We wish we could be with you as we have in the past to honor each one of you at this event. We want you to know that we believe in you, and we know that you will continue to make us proud. Always, always remember, you come from a community that honors and supports the youth. We'll continue to follow up on your growth and in your future. Wish you much success. May the same time. And now I'd like to introduce Mr. Casey Johnson to read a statement from Mr. Mike West, Goose County Superintendent of Schools. Good evening. I'll do my best to uh, act like Mr. West, having a step school and a bigger voice. So I'm going to work really hard on this, okay? This is to you, Seven, right here. <clears throat> Tonight, it gives me great pleasure to address you, Super Seven of Palooza High School 2020. Seniors soon to be graduating from Palooza High and about to enter the next phase of your lives, a step in your world which I hope you will find exciting and that is what I was hoping to relay to you, a positive message of hope and thrill for the future and what it will bring. However, this time of your lives I am sure is surreal at best. You may feel shortchanged or cheated out of many traditions you should have or could have experienced. No, it's not fair, yet I believe it is an opportunity for every one of you. One that your parents have not experienced nor desired. When your parents graduated, they entered a world quite different from the one you will face. Ready or not, you'll be entering a world full of opportunities and challenges. It may not seem so, but you already have been tested in how dynamic and flexible your interpreted goals and aspirations have become. Because of this pandemic, all of you are a select group, a privileged group, and a unique group, the 
one-of-a-kind group that has been given the daunting task to persevere with this trial on your path to greatness. Greatness, yes, as this journey through the past few months from this moment onward, all choices are yours. Take advantage of what you, excuse me, take advantage of what is before you. When you overcome this pandemic event, take what you have learned as it will lead you to new levels of achievement, of accomplishment, of opportunity to change the world and your future. All you need to do is decide to be the success that you are destined to be. You are responsible for what happens in your lives and for the choices you make throughout your life. Your journey will call upon your faculties, especially your independence, your determination, and your perseverance. You have the tools you need from your parents, your teachers, your friends. The past three months are only a test that all of you have passed in flying colors. We, which includes all the people here that have supported you, have hopes for all of you. We hope that you will never let others keep you from pursuing the things that you really want for life. We hope that you will live your life with vigor and passion. Always keep what is right and just as tenets in your life. We hope you will remember that you are responsible for what you say and what you do. We hope you aim high and your endurance will be strong to achieve your goals. We hope that your dreams will be big and always in vivid color. We hope that you remember that there's nothing wrong with aiming high and failing, but there is something wrong with failing because you did not try in the first place. Therefore, dare to dream those big dreams and attack those challenges you will face with courage and emulation, and you will have no regrets. As you will soon graduate from Calusa High School, I hope you go into the world, look back at times, and remember friends that you made at Calusa High, and acknowledge the, the, the knowledge you gained from teachers, coaches, parents, and all who have guided you. I'm not one of those people who believe that school days are the best days of your life. Rather, I tell you that your life will be rich and fulfilling after school if you are prepared to work hard, to never stop learning, and always remember to respect yourself and others. Remember us, Super 7, and remember your soon-to-be alma mater, Calusa High School. Our best wishes go with you. Congratulations and good luck as you begin your next adventure. Go change the world. Mike West, Superintendent, Calusa County Office of Education. I now would like to introduce Regina McNeil, our school counselor. She'd like to read a statement from Jim Pendrick, president, president of the Lions Club.
Emily enjoys cooking for her family, creating art, traveling. Recent, recently, Emily has kept busy redecorating her room with her own creations. After graduating from high school, Emily plans to attend a four-year college in Southern California. She's considering a major in art history and speech therapy. Next, I'd like to introduce Victoria Magical. She's the daughter of Jessica Silver. Silva. Excuse me. Tori is a proud member of FFA, with her favorite subjects being science and math. Tori keeps busy with extracurricular activities, including cheer, basketball, ESA, CSF, FBLA, FFA, and Spanish Club. She also enjoys more making art and spending time with her family and friends. After graduating from Palooza High School, Tori plans to attend a UC, majoring in human biology, and hopes to become a doctor. I screw up one of these acronyms. You guys know what they are, right? Pretty sure I feel so. Next is Casey Medina. She's the daughter of Ruby and Manny Medina. Casey is always eager to discover new topics relating to math and science. She likes to challenge herself in school that she, so she can always be working at her full academic potential. Casey is a proud three sport athlete competing in cheer, basketball, and golf. She's also a member of FFA, FBLA, Spanish Club, ESA, and CSF. Along with her school commitments, Casey enjoys hiking, exercising, fishing, gardening, scrapbooking, and traveling. Casey plans for the, Casey's plans for the future include attending a four-year four -year university, where she will pursue a career in dentistry. She hopes to become a dental surgeon. Next is James Murray, he's the son of Ira Murray. James' favorite classes are at CHS or History and Science. His extracurricular activities include FBLA, FFA, Spanish Club, and Art Club. Outside of school, James enjoys reading, listening to music, movies, playing basketball, and watching the NBA. After, after high school, James plans to attend UC Davis to study human biology and would love to become a pediatrician. Next, we have Abigail Smith. She's the daughter of Casey and Trisha Smith. Abby enjoys her academic classes, especially science. She is a three sport athlete who participates in cheerleading, basketball, and track and field. Abby is a member of ESA, FBLA, Spanish Club, and CSF. Outside of school, Abby is involved with the 4-H Swine Club, competitive basketball, and is an active member in her church. She also spends time reading, paddleboarding, hiking, swimming, traveling, and spending time with her family and friends. When Abby is not studying or competing for CHS, she works at Aces Cabinetry and at Gonzales. Abby plans to attend a four-year college where she will major in nursing and go on to pursue a graduate degree in becoming a nurse.
Outside of school, Lily enjoys working for Process Cross Electric Company, spending time with her friends and family and her dogs. After high school, Lily plans to attend junior college and obtain a California real estate license. She plans to transfer to a California State University school where she will begin a major in education to pursue her career in teaching. Now I would like to introduce Ms. Nubiana McNeil again to read the bios for our Super 7 seniors.
use his um, artistic ability as all the chart. He's engaging, he's um, careful, he's thoughtful. Um, everything an artist needs, but those are wonderful traits for a human being, Edgar, and they will help you in everything that you do. And we need students like you for this world that we're in. So the, all of those traits have taken so far in this life. You're incredible. I'm so proud of you. So thank you. You have placed yourself in a 
finished watching you compete in the show ready to prepare, and you serving as a leader in our chapter. I wish we could all, I wrote this the other night because I was hoping we could all be together, and we're able to be, so that means a lot to me. And I want to congratulate all your classmates as well. It's a really special occasion for me as a teacher, I know that it is for you as students. And then in, cl in closing, the live in, never lose that quiet determination that you exhibited me, it has served you so well. Thank you for all you've done for our FFA chapter, and I truly appreciate your efforts. I look forward to seeing where the future takes you. Curiosity is all too often over. 
you sure? Dr. Gray? No. No, I'm not. I'm not sure about anything. That doesn't mean I won't act. It's this sentiment, this outlook, and this mindset that separates explorers, innovators, and leaders from the rest of us who choose comfort over the road. It's this sentiment, it's this outlook, and it's this mindset that separates Shana from the majority of her peers. Shane is so successful, not because she's fearless, but because she's learned to embrace her fears and face them as a necessary part of the system that produces progress and personal growth. While most of the people actively avoid uncomfortable situations, Shane has learned to seek them out. Her former tennis coach once told her, no matter if you're winning or losing, nobody should be able to tell the difference. I've never been able to tell the difference of Shane. It's obvious she's taking us to heart. What a fantastic way to approach life, especially in 2020. But that doesn't mean I won't act. It's this resolve that I know she only uses fuel to propel herself forward. It's this mindset that's going to get her to the East Coast on a motorcycle. It's this mindset that's going to uh, land her that impactful environmental science career. It's going to help her push the boundaries of her photography and her art and the boundaries of photography and art in general, which is what she'll choose. It will drive her learning languages or instruments or anything else cognitively demanding. All the things that many of us used to dream of before we got to I want to end with a final quote from Rollins, and I think it perfectly summarizes Shane as a student over the last few years. If you had the pleasure of instructing her, raising her, coaching her, Young ladies knew you, probably should not have to be using the line too much. If it's worth doing, it's worth over.
doing a lot of yoga actually that was good. So six years ago I started coaching Andy and uh, everybody hates to lose and Andy definitely hates to lose. Uh, she's a very competitive person. But what sets Andy apart is that she has learned how to prepare to win, which is a different thing than just um, being upset when you lose. Uh, she has always been committed to getting her teammates and herself uh, ready to compete at the highest level and practice every day. Uh, in games, she's great at reading situations and making decisions and communicating with her teammates ways, um, in ways that give us an competitive advantage. Uh, Annie's preparation would go to a whole other level when we were preparing to play a team that had beat us previously. Um, she would analyze the game that we played and the game that the other team played and figure out a way for us to come, up, come out on top. And so this made work with Annie very enjoyable because her preparation for the game was the same thing that I was trying to do to prepare the whole team. Uh, and so that being said, athletes don't get credit for what they accomplish on the court. But the skills that Annie demonstrated on the court while playing basketball uh, are the skills that all teachers want their students to have. We want students to be able to look at situations critically and make decisions about what they observe, take appropriate actions based on their analysis, and communicate what they have learned from others. And I think Annie learned how to do that um, in the classroom and in her co-curricular activities, in her extracurricular activities um, throughout the time that was in high school. So, uh, I was very fortunate to be able to have Andy in the class. I'm very fortunate to coach Andy. And Andy, I'm proud of you. I'm excited to see what you will accomplish in the future. Thank you.
It's easy to see humans shape their environment. We do so every minute of every single day. But it often takes years of studious practice with science to fully grasp the reverse, that we are in turn shaped by our environment, especially in the short term with regards to health. Knowledge is power. And this knowledge, shared by Nightingale and now McCarthy, make them both extremely powerful. McCarthy reminds me tremendously of the young Nightingale. She's intelligent, determined, a no nonsense, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, logically minded, and dare I say, slightly stubborn, young lady, that mirrors many of the character traits exhibited by Nightingale as she shaped the world of medicine. Nightingale was an extreme doctor. McCarty's writing conveys a substantial ability to see the complexity of the world around her and make connections between systems that are often overlooked. If you've never had the pleasure of watching McCarty during the writing process, it's a sight to be seen. She wears her heart on her sleeve. We've made a game over the years trying to predict what she's writing based solely off of her facial expressions that she writes. After four years, it got dangerously good for this game. However, this is not a testament to my predictive abilities, but rather a testament to the amount of heart and soul that she puts into all of her work, including her writing. Nightingale is a philanthropist, not through monetary donations, but through service. The party's got a proven track record of service and reaction. Over the last four years, she's consistently elevated those around her, determined to promote access and equity in her community. This drive must be the product of a supportive family which I know she likes to hear. You strike me as the kind of family who, if you show up on their doorstep to ask for a cup of sugar, you're not leaving without a pound of sugar, two dozen eggs, a baking dish, and a goat to carry it all home, while you write a thank you note expressing their gratitude to you who stopped by. Thank you, McGarden, for everything you've done for your daughter for this community. Nurses challenge you. It's not a profession solely dedicated to the identification and treatment of symptoms much too narrow for you. To master the profession, one needs a skill set to treat the entire patient. The capacity to treat them physically, mentally, and emotionally. The party possesses the necessary intelligence to be a fantastic medical profession. And I believe the humanitarian work needed to be indicated. When asked to entrust the care of my family members to medical professionals, I screen them for similar skill sets. I'll end with a quote directly from Nightingale. Nursing is an art, and if it's to be made an art, it requires exclusive devotion, devotion as hard a preparation as any painter or sculptor's work. For what is having to do with dead canvas or dead marble compared to having to do with the living body, the temple of God's spirit? It's one of the fine arts. I'd almost said the finest. If this truly is your problem with Hardy, you're right. If life takes you down another path, remember the fire that got you.
I've had so many great and supportive teachers, it's been hard to single out just the one teacher that it was. However, this ultimate cons consistent support and confidence in her students is shown through her careful way of she through the careful way she nurtures the students and prepares them to come. I strongly encourage the Red Hawks and future Red Hawks to make the most of their high school experience because four years can feel like both a blink and a lifetime. Thank you. 
without your guidance and your excellent teaching, I don't think any of us would be here. And all of us know uh, late night study sessions, uh, reteaching ourselves subjects on Khan Academy, that's a normal for us. And all of you guys deserve to be here. Um, secondly, I'd like to thank my, my teacher of influence, which is uh, Ms. Bird. And right now, she's probably be cringing because I'm wearing black socks with a blue suit and red shoes. Uh, instead of a matching blue socks. But they're not Nike, they're sports socks. So. Uh, Ms. Berg has shown me what it means to be professional in a crazy world. Uh, she has shown me uh, what it truly means to be an active and respectful member of society. Uh, she has always been and forever will be my FBLA advisor, a life mentor, and a great teacher friend. Uh, one of my fondest memories of Ms. Berg is my sophomore year, we were on our FBLA officer retreat, and I sat in the third row, and I, this was her first year of being an advisor, and we were going through an intersection in Marysville, and the light had turned red, so she, she breaks pretty harsh, and she told us beforehand to wear our seatbelts, you know, like all teachers do, and then me being stubborn, I didn't want to wear mine. Uh, so I ended up in the third seat, the first row seat, and I smiled, and she laughed, and I got up. Uh, lastly, I'd like to thank my parents. Uh, growing up, I always saw how hard they worked, and I never really appreciated it until now. Uh, if I had a dollar for every time my dad asked me if I had homework, if it was done, I'd probably be able to pay for all four years and then be able to pay more. <laughs> um, thank you, Dad, for always pushing me to do my best. Uh, <laughs> Mom, thank you for always waking up extra early just to make me breakfast. Make sure I wasn't hungry, and providing me a good morning note for every day of school. I really appreciate it, and that's going to be the first thing for my college packing list. Thank you, I love you very much. Thank you. 
about inviting every single person who enters this school to realize his or her relatively balanced potential in all areas of worthwhile human endeavor. Is concerned more is concerned with more than grades, attendance, and academic achievement. Is concerned with the process of becoming a decent and productive human being. Congratulations again to all of you Super 7 students. Thank you all parents for attending tonight. Everybody enjoy your evening. Thank you.